All right, what's up guys? I'm going to go ahead and build along. I'm gonna do a little bit of a build along over probably a couple of days, actually. <clears throat> One of the build alongs I've really wanted to do is with a PVC bow and arrow. And I pretty much learned everything I know from Backyard Boyer. Um, and I'm going to make the bow out of a three quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe and a one inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. This I'm only gonna need about a foot of because I'm gonna turn it into um, like a reinforced handle section. I'm also gonna be using some fiberglass rods. These are full 48 inch fiberglass driveway markers. And um, I marked it in the middle here and I put some duct tape around the markers, around two of them. And uh, I put it here because this is about four and a half inches from the middle to the edge of the duct tape here. And that's going to be kind of important. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape just from here, from the edge of this duct tape, all the way to the edge of this duct tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, solidify that. I'm going to wrap it a few times so that I can make it really solid in the middle section here and what we're going to do then is put this third one over like this and then tape it down again from here to here and the reason that we're going to do that is so that this stays together and it'll stay in like this sort of bundle shape all the way up to here but then at the edge what will happen is when we press the pipe flat it'll go in between down here and it'll stay round over here That's okay so I taped these two together um, the couple extra wraps near the ends just to make sure that the middle this rod doesn't end up going too deep in between here because you want to keep it like more rigid out here and then I tape the ends so that they won't abrade the inside of the pipe but I tape them separately so that I can still get them to flatten with this in between like that but now because we taped the first two together, you can see that they won't flatten that much in the middle, which is exactly what we want. Okay, okay, so here you can see that I taped the two on the bottom here together, and then the one in the middle I taped to the top of it. I just put a couple passes of duct tape. What's more important is that the, the the first two you tape together really well. The third one's a little bit less important, but you still want to tape it on there nice. And then once we flatten the pipe, so if I back out a little here, once we flatten the pipe, the middle will stay nice and rigid, and then it'll push, whoops, it'll push right down in between the other two pipes and that's going to keep more flexibility in the limbs and more rigidity in the handle section okay so I got my uh, three-quarter inch pipe here I cut it to 58 inches and I left the fiberglass rods at 48 inches long so that should leave me with about five four to five inches of tip at each end of the pipe and I also marked the center and I marked four and five inches out now I'm going to take this bundle and just slide it all the way into the pipe. You want your markings to line up with where that third rod is. That's where you're going to press so that it splays the other two apart. So we'll just go ahead and slide that all the way through into the middle. And then I'll show you the flattening of it. With the amount of duct tape that I put on there, I can push the thing in like fairly easily, though there's a little bit of resistance that 
there's a little bit of resistance that the rods have going in there, which is also a good thing because you don't want them to turn over at all. Okay, that's pretty much good to go. So one of the important things that you're gonna want is when you go ahead and flatten it in the, in the flattening jig, you'll feel and hear those rods being pushed together and automatically it'll taper flatten just because of how those rods are gonna be set up. So I'm gonna heat, I'm gonna flatten it from that eight inch mark. Taper flatten both limbs and you can see like what kind of a taper we're getting there from there to there and from there to there it, like, it actually looks pretty even and actually another um another problem that i see sometimes is when you're flattening one side it sort of pushes the rods down the pipe a little bit but i have a little file here that i can stick inside there to sort of measure how deep And, I mean, it's to within, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. So I got actually pretty spot on. I'm going to wait till it cools down a little bit more. And then I'm going to heat some of this handle section. Mostly in the middle, but I want to get these little bit of creases out of there. And then, I mean, you can kind of see the crease right in here a little bit. Good. Okay. So at this stage, I want to make sure that the limbs are flat and then the handle section is going to get squished a little bit, however much it can, upward. So inside. Again, I'm trying to keep the limbs as flat as possible while I do this. While you're heating the pipe, the duct tape will probably melt quite a bit, but the shape of the pipe at this point is going to keep the middle section. It's going to keep those rods in, in a basically in a bundle, so you don't have to worry too much about it. This is setting pretty well right now. I'm going to go ahead and just keep flexing it forward over my knee a little bit and making sure if anything that we end up with a slight bit of reflex in the handle okay so out of your one inch pipe so before we actually make the tips of the bow what we're gonna do is heat up one side so that it's round and you can see I made my marks with the marker on the edges. And I heat it almost all the way down to that mark. Uh, I'm going to make this round again. And then what we're going to do is take your 1 inch pipe and you're going to cut out a 10 inch section. So this is 10 inches of 1 inch Schedule 40 pipe. And we're going to heat this so that it's really, really, really flexible and very quickly we're going to slide it all the way down onto um, the middle of our bow here and this is going to again reinforce the handle section just to stiffen it up even more then what we're going to do is go ahead and and work on the tips after that but i want to make sure i get this handle section on right if you do the recurves in the tips before you get the handle section on there it's going to be a lot harder to to slide that all the way down and it actually gets kind of tough to slide it all the way down to begin with. So you really want to take your time and make sure that you have this heated really well. And then you want to work quickly to get it down to the handle section because it's going to cool very quickly. Okay, so right here where I made my 10 inch marks, we're going to try to put this pipe in between those two 10 inch marks. So from the outside here to the outside here. The pipe will actually shrink a bit when it cools, 
and because it's being stretched, it'll also shrink because of that. So we're gonna we're gonna find out that this 10 inch piece, even though it's 10 inches from this mark to this mark, it's gonna be smaller than 10 inches overall, which is actually nice because we can line it up that way in between those two marks. Okay, you can kind of see how squishy it is. We'll go ahead and heat it for another 30 seconds or so, just so it's thoroughly heated. You can't stress that enough. If you don't get it down over the handle of the pipe, it's gonna set on the limb and then you'll have to cut it off and start over. Okay, attempt number one. sure I get it right in between those two markings and then we'll just let it sit here you can kind of squish the edges because the edges might puff up a little bit you want to make sure that it's on there as good as it's gonna get okay so it's getting pretty squishy you can see it kind of giving a lot I'm gonna give it a little bit more heat We'll do so this part I pretty much always do by hand so I'm just gonna flex it upward like this let the weight of the bow make the recurve and then squish more or less toward the tip more and kind of hold that in place as I let the weight of the bow make the recurve I don't want too dramatic of a taper, but with how squishy this pipe is right now, it's hard not to. And I like doing it this way just by hand because it makes it like a nice natural transition. And I can do it one time instead of flattening it perpendicular, then having to reheat it to shape it. Um, obviously, if you like doing it that way, you can go ahead and do it that way, but I think it looks pretty good here. You can see about the straightness of it. It actually looks pretty good. So not too much in the recurve department. You can kind of see it's nice, um, nice and subtle, and then a little bit of the recurve at the tip. That's how I pretty much make all my bows now, and I, I like that style a lot. So okay, so this is the rough finish of the bow. You can see the limb taper flattened until it hits the tip. I just cut the edge of the tip off, made a little string knock. Then this one, same thing, cut the edge off, string knock, and then I made a paracord string. Put it back. <laughs> no, I to the top. My string knocks are not super deep. I need to cut those a little deeper. But you can see at the handle part, there's virtually no flexion. I mean, it's almost straight. I can see that it's curved just slightly, but then all of the curves really happening in the limb. And uh, yeah, I'd say this bow looks like maybe that limb is flexing a little more. So that's definitely the top limb, but it's pretty much finished. I mean, you could shoot it like this. I think for my purposes, I'm going to um, cut those string knots a little deeper just so that it sits better. And uh, then I'll, you know, sand it down and do what I will with it. But that is how I make a bow.